Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. They are real estate rivals reshaping big chunks of downtown Detroit. But today, Dan Gilbert and Chris Illich were on the same side. Growing concerns about children poisoned by lead inside their own homes. A new report that claims it's really bad in one local community. New video from the moment police arrived at the home where a fire killed a local mother. Tonight, her family questioning the investigation into what went wrong. Good to have you with us for Local 4 News at 6. It was an arson. That's the conclusion investigators have arrived at about the fire that killed Candace Harrington at her home in River Rouge. Her family isn't convinced, and now the River Rouge Police Department wants to set the record straight as newly released body cam video shows us what the first responders saw. Coco McAvoy has a story. You can still see the damage left behind from the fire that killed Candace Harrington. Her family has been demanding answers, and today a detective from the River Rouge Police Department is speaking about her case. Newly released body camera footage shows the moment police arrived on scene. Um, it shows the officers walking up to the scene. He's interviewing witnesses that are outside. This was a controversial case from the start. There were rumors of a fire bombing, but Detective DeSumo Mitchell says the footage rules that theory out. It shows that the window is intact, so um, allegations of the home being firebombed is, is completely unfounded. Four people were inside of the apartment when a couch caught fire and spread. 34-year-old Candace Harrington was the only one who didn't make it out. Harrington's death led to an outcry from her family. I just want justice for my sister is all I want. She didn't deserve to die like that. She has four kids that have to grow up without their mother. Shane Davis has been going after the police department for her sister's death. That it's nothing's being done with it at all. That it's just being swept under the rug. That's all I feel. River Rouge is not doing anything about her. Detective Mitchell says that's not the case. Just our condolences to the family. We're sorry that they're, they're unsatisfied with the way this investigation has led but there is no foul play. Um, medical examiner ruled as accidental as well. Davis is certain something more sinister happened. Drugs involved, this is the outcome. Mitchell says they spent countless hours on this case and are certain it's a tragic accident that killed Harrington. And as we mentioned, the three other people made it out of the apartment safely. So the question is, what happened to Harrington? Why wasn't she able to make it out safely? Police believe she might have been disoriented from the smoke, and that's the reason why she passed away. Back to you. So are police finished with the investigation at this point, Coco? The detective tells me they have a couple of more people they would like to interview, but they do believe strongly that this was an accidental fire. And so for now, this case is closed. Yeah. All right, Coco, thanks. Michigan State University says it is doing its best to show it's improving its policies and culture after the Larry Nassar abuse scandal. The university says it is already moving forward with recommendations from an outside law firm. They include education and outreach for employees, student athletes, and students in the Greek system at MSU. The university is also planning a survey on Title IX issues in the 2018-2019 school year, and it's adding staff to programs that can support the victims of abuse. Wayne State University and the Detroit Medical Center are ending a partnership they've had for decades. It's a relationship that's kept 400 Wayne State doctors at a time in, D uh, in DMC hospitals, but the school couldn't come to a new contract with Dallas-based Tenet Health. The, D the DMC CEO says the relationship had become, quote, acrimonious. Wayne State's president says this comes as a surprise, and he's disappointed Tenet decided to end negotiations. The two sides are pledging to work together to ensure there are no interruptions to patient care and student education during this transition. We've done it again. Another spectacular day, but this time it kind of ends here in a little while. Huh? Yeah, we got some stuff we got to talk about yeah. that's coming. Hi, Ben. Yeah, guys, uh, 85. We tied a record high, but we're also starting to see the moisture increase. The breezy conditions are out there. Uh, and even though Fort Live Radar coming clean right now, other than that uh, rogue storm we saw in Monroe County, uh, there is stuff to watch. Uh, just off to the south of the state line, we've got a thunderstorm there on the east side of I-69 in northern Indiana. It's moving to the east-northeast at about 40 miles an hour, so this is going to 
to be into parts of Lenawee County before 630. Uh, right now, there are no warnings with this. We don't really anticipate any, but this back line is the more potent line. That's back towards Chicago and the southern end of Lake Michigan. That's what we'll have to contend with as we get closer to the overnight hours, but we have been pulled out of the marginal risk for tonight. Fast forward to tomorrow night. We are in the marginal risk. This is the more likely chance of severe weather, and we will discuss the timing on that coming up in just a few minutes. Don't forget to download our local forecasters app. You can follow tonight and tomorrow's storms and get any watches and warnings immediately. Go to your favorite app store and search WDIV. Devin? 4,000 of the nation's biggest real estate developers are in Detroit for a look at the city's recovery. So today, Detroit's two biggest salespeople gave their pitch, sharing the spotlight on one stage. Our business editor Rob Maloney was there, and he's got more. Quite a day, Rob. Uh, I was. You know, downtown revival is probably right at that liftoff phase, Devin. I think we're all pretty clear on that. And so what Dan Gilbert and Chris Illich were saying is that we are at a unique moment in time, and they were trying to put the best foot forward for all of these investors in the crowd because they say that there's more room than just the two of them to invest in the city. The ULI's mission is to build thriving communities through responsible land use. They certainly know the Gilbert and Illich names. Chris Illich introduced his mother, Marion, who doesn't get out much these days, and he credited her and his late father with helping keep Detroit's heart beating when everyone else thought it was dead. We're a city who has gone through a cycle of hardship and emerged battle-tested and tougher than before. We've kept our authenticity and grit through it all. The ULI crowd also knows opportunity when it sees it, something Dan Gilbert invited everyone here to do, telling the audience about a drive he recently took with his 12-year-old son, much like ones he used to take with his grandfather. When I was pointing at things, I wasn't using the word used to. I was using the word gonna, like G-O-N-N-A, -N -N -A, gonna. There's going to be a building over there, and there's going to be a big one over there, and there's going to be this, and there's going to be that. Chris Illich was proud to tell the audience about Michigan's comeback, too, announcing the brain drain of college students is over. In the last four years, not only have we started keeping them, but now we're attracting even more than we graduate on, a, on an annual basis. I don't think you can compete. And if you believe talent is the ticket to your business's success, I don't think you can compete being other, other than an urban core, whether it's Detroit or anywhere. Gilbert also said that it, you really need to touch and feel this uh, revival in the city of Detroit. You can't just talk about it. You can't look at it from, say, Toronto or L.A. You've got to reach out, touch it, feel it. And he said that's what he wants the ULI to do as they're here uh, for their convention. Back to you. And how long are they here, uh, Rod? Good group to have in uh, town. It's a four-day right. convention. <laughs> uh, it's a four-day convention, Devin. And uh, they also are saying that it's been it's the first time in 40 years that the ULI has been here, which I think wow. speaks volumes about what they think about what's happening. Here. Absolutely. Says a lot. All right, Rod. A case of hepatitis A has been confirmed in an individual who worked at an event at West Bloomfield High School. The event was West Bloomfield High School's Starving Arts Luncheon held on April 21st. The school sent a letter informing attendees that an individual who worked the event tested positive for the virus. The Oakland County Health Division advises anyone who attended the luncheon to get the hepatitis A vaccine by May 5th. The search is on for those responsible for an armed robbery at a 7-Eleven in Warren. It happened last week at Nine Mile between Ryan and Mound Roads. Security video here shows the suspects go through the register. An employee in the store says the suspects demanded money and cigarettes. Police believe they may be involved in a similar armed robbery at a family dollar on Eight Mile. One in seven. That is how many children in Highland Park are showing elevated levels of lead in their blood. As recently as 2016, it's the worst rate in the state, and the problem is likely within the homes in which these children live. Jermont Terry live with this new report shining a light on a very old problem. Jermont. Yes, Devin, this latest uh, report really raises concerns, concerns specifically for the children who live in these neighborhoods. Now, they say the numbers don't lie, and what's outlined in this nearly 79-page report places the city of Highland Park in a category no city wants to be in. Drive around Highland Park, and you can find evidence of urban decay. But in the middle of the poverty are young boys and girls who call this community home. As the youngsters grow up, the latest Michigan Department of Health and Human Services data shows something else is going up. 
lead levels. According to the state findings, elevated blood levels were found in 14% of children tested in Highland Park. In the year 2016, one in every seven children had elevated lead levels. It was more than any other city in Michigan. Something should be done about it, not just a survey. I mean, it should be, you know, something looking into it. We don't want another Flint. Unlike the Flint lead crisis in children, these high levels have nothing to do with water in Highland Park. The older homes where many of the children live is one key contributing factor. Residents realize the lead paint concerns are serious. I live in a building that we were having that problem. The landlord came and he solved it. So it's up to the people to complain about it, fight, and get to the bottom of it. And while the data is important to have, people are left wondering what will everyone do with this troubling information? You know what uh, Lansing and you know Highland Park, uh, you know what they're going to do about it. I mean, it needs to be addressed immediately. Now, of course, we did reach out to the city of Highland Park, and the mayor tells me that, uh, his spokesperson tells me that he is most definitely reviewing this data that was released today, and by the end of the week, they should have some type of inf more information as to how they plan to combat this big, big problem. Reporting live in Highland Park tonight, Jermont Terry, Local 4. Sure is. All right, Jermont. Well, let's see what Lester Holt and the team are working on for NBC Nightly News coming up tonight. Lester joins us live from Los Angeles with a preview. Lester, good evening. Hey, Devin and Kimberly, good evening. We'll have the latest from the scene of the deadly crash of a military transport in Georgia. What caused it to fall from the sky? Also, the growing number of paintball attacks throughout the country that are escalating into real gun violence with tragic consequences. More when we see you back here tonight for Nightly News. But right now, back to you in Detroit. It's become a terrible problem. All right, Lester, we'll see you about 20 minutes from now. Still ahead, lots of teenagers have unwrapped an Apple Watch as a holiday gift, but for one young, young woman, it now means something more. The serious health problem it revealed, that's coming up in Good Health. Also, a very large statue of RoboCop will soon be installed in Detroit. We know exactly where you can go to see it, the new home that makes perfect sense. Next. <laughs>